Jack Ricker. This is my uh, compadre <laughs> and consiglior, Albrin Noto. Good to be here. Let's uh, do some video. All right. They, uh, they want more builds and less chit-chat, but I'm better at chit-chatting than work. Yeah, it, it, it is a heck of a lot easier on us, too, yeah. to uh, just talk. Yeah, we yeah. like that. Building, you get dirty, cut yourself. It's a lot of work, guys. Mm -hmm. It's not as easy as we make it look. No. Um, the contest. It's up. It's up. The contest is up. Nice. Uh, we're getting a lot of uh, entries in the contest, and uh, I got to tell you, this is... Uh, a little hard for me. Um, How so, Jack? <laughs> well, you know, we can be here in the garage and we can yeah. run the video cameras when we put this out to actually be in, it's kind of a one-way deal. Yeah, uh, it, it, we're projecting a lot. Now, yes. one of the, the missions of the contest is to get us a little bit better in touch with our viewers, who they are and what they're doing mm -hmm. and stuff. Absolutely. I'm reading through just the first couple hundred entries. Wow. And Brian, there are some people out there that are really passionately committed to this and have been for a couple of years. Oh, man. That's great news. And, and I mean, like, one-armed people and stuff. And, <laughs> I, I mean, the, some of the stories, uh, those two <laughs> essay questions at the end, by the that's way, <laughs> if you didn't fill those out, th that's really what it's about. Yeah. Is uh, what do you want to convert and, and then... Why do you want to do that? Right. Um, and uh, some of the stories I'm reading have got me in tears. Now, I'm naturally a cynical, sarcastic bastard. That's genetic. I can't <laughs> fix it. Can't help it. But I felt a little foolish at some of the flip way we've dealt with this in the face of some of the, the stories of absolute passion and commitment to this electric car thing, and they'll, they're doing anything they can to do it. I'm sorry, wow. I understand that you want lead acid to be an option. Yeah. It isn't. Yeah. They're not the same thing. It, I, I can't, it, it's, lead acid is not a step to a life po. It's, they're the same as a walrus is the same as a kangaroo. Yeah, they're both mammals, they both have two eyes, hair. You know, you're not going to get a but, walrus to hop down a road at 45 miles an hour. It's not going to happen in the Australian heat. No. Um, the, the, what makes the cars viable, I'll repeat this one more time, is the batteries. That's, that's what got us into it. Right. I was around right. electric cars going back to 1979. They didn't work. They're fun, they're interesting, they're, they're a demonstration, they're an experiment. They're not a car. With the lithium, they are. Yeah, you can make a car go 200 miles on a lead acid battery. You're hauling yeah. around a ton and a half of lead. Yeah, look what we've got in that van. In Exa that, uh, exactly. We, I mean, it's not that we don't know, no. it's that we don't care. Yeah. It's not, not the same thing. But because of the expense, a lot of people who really want to play in this you know, are not able to raise the funds, but are passionately committed to this. You were all over it, right? Well, I'm glad. I'm just glad we're doing it. I'm glad the type of response that we're getting, and uh, it's well, well it, it had me in tears. I feel wow. a little foolish for being such a cynic, um, you know. And some of the comments I've made, um, it, 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 it kind of threw me. I, I may not be able to read through those as much as we thought. We're going to pick <laughs> ten. What I think I'm going to do is uh, pull like a hundred okay. and give each of the sponsors uh, the list and have them each pick two. And, okay. And then we'll that pick would work. two. All right. And that'll get 10. And then we'll get them to shoot videos, send pictures, better description, sure. and put that up on the website. And you all are going to have to pick them. I can't deal with it emotionally, uh, for one thing. Uh, EV who, Land's who got gets talent. and who doesn't get. I, yeah, we, I don't want to just randomly pull right. somebody out of the ether. That's a lottery, and it's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not really a gambler. Um, so we're going to have some organized process to do that. Um, probably run it like five months on the submissions, and then, and then try to get it up and down in a month. And last month, on, do uh, the... Uh, and let our viewers pick it. I can't, I can't 
deal with it emotionally. Right. Uh, I probably shouldn't know who our viewers are. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have flushed out some more sponsors. Um, the, the hardest one, I think, and I've always thought, is going to be about the controller. Yes, I think so too. It's I've a- got two Azilla controllers. I think that that would be the most popular pick. If, if they could so. have anything, I think they've still got the name. I thought Zilla still has a name. Here's the problem. Then the rest of reviewers can't really, I can't get from Mont Mar. He's kind of making them, kind of not. Uh, you know, he yeah. had that experience with James Morrison and that. I can't make it out. Uh, he's yeah. uh, uh, what I call a non-standard individual anyway. And there's, uh, I don't mean that negatively. No. I am too. So um, I'm somewhat sympathetic. Um, but um, he's a little hard to read. Uh, I don't know what their plans are, but we can't really be talking a great deal about something you can't have. Right. And that, that's what, what's that's, uh, come up with many and, and some other things, and, and I don't mean have by expense. Again, I can only be so sympathetic about the expense. A John boat now is eighteen thousand bucks. If you go to that boat show, right? I paid two dollars and thirty-five cents for an onion. <laughs> what is not expensive? <laughs> right. And a car is a major expense for everybody anyway. You want a free yeah. car? I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Um, it's um, uh, this is uh, kind of, for me kind of a serious business. Mm-hmm. I do not make these uh, expenditures flippantly or without pain. Um, and no matter what your resources are, you want. It to be an effective expenditure. Right. Um, but how do you pronounce them? Evnetics. Evnetics, uh, when I've spoken to them, that is uh, that's is the pronunciation, at least from the company. Evnetics. Uh, I kind of gave you a hint about the Cadillac. This is a 300 kilowatt pulse width modulated DC motor controller. Yes. That's pretty strong if it'll do part of that. I think so. I mean, that's a lot. That's a... Uh, uh, that's, we, that's we, pretty good. This is not the one they're contributing. We actually bought two of them for the Cadillac. Yes. And, and, uh, and that's kind of how they got into contention. It has an interesting feature that can be done with any controller, really. But uh, they've actually done some work on the uh, idle for an automatic yes. transmission. Yes, yeah, that's a and, big feature. And ostensibly have found some things that I don't know about, which is entirely possible. It may okay. be not quite as simple as I think. Um, and they imply that that is the case uh, in what they've found with their idle mode. For the idle feature. And Great. so that's a, a big thing. But, you know, one of the things we ask you in the survey is what you consider important. Um, and features in selecting EV components. American Made, by the way, ranks at the very bottom. Particularly, <laughs> I hadn't thought about it, among people from other countries, from other countries which is 40% right. of that's our viewers. They, they could care less. Right. So, <laughs> could but, carry a negative. Um, build quality and yeah. specifications are very big. Um, price, uh, I expected to be very big, and it's actually not uh, one of the main considerations. Fortunate for Evnetics, uh, at $2,895, they're pretty proud of this. But looking yep. at the unit, I got to tell you, I would be too. This it, is a nice. pretty quality build. This is some very nicely machined aluminum with a fin structure, two fans on here for air cooling. As you know, we kind of like um, water cooling. And they actually have two threaded ports, uh, eighth inch uh, 27 thread NPT, yes, um, which will work really well for us. We like those Summit Racing component um, um, water components, and we can thread something right in there. It's not a cheap plastic thing that um, yeah, not something uh, to get a low right, so right. And PVC. so I, I like that option um, with the two fans in this. Um, thing here, but they, they tell you if you're going to use it at a thousand amps uh, for more than a second or two that um, you can, uh, you want to use water. And we're fans of liquid cooling. We're, I mean, we're it's, kind of there. Yeah, we're, uh, big half inch terminals. Yeah. For This is the motor. You got two terminals there, two here. I have gone blind 
with these um, connectors, which I never can find the part can't, number can't to, find to them get them. Yeah. Uh, but just like on our Tim's controller, and these little pins and trying to get them in there, and then if I have to change them about half time, I chew up the plastic you on the connector. can't get them back in. Now yeah. I can't get them to stay yep. in, and I can't find the part number of the connector. Right. They've uh, given us some standard old-fashioned Bakelite terminal strips, very nicely marked, mm -hmm. with my connections, and I can uh, deal with that. It, it may not be quite as trick uh, a hookup in the end, but, but we, we can bring all that we can bring it to, a little, to, uh, to another connector that we can get. And put a little, uh, what do you call that uh, tubing that we use? Uh, or shrink wrap? Shrink, uh, no, not mm. shrink wrap. The split, split, split loom. Yeah, we can, um, we can pretty it up. That sort of thing. It has a, um, I don't know what I think about this. I haven't tried it yet. But they've got a built-in website in here, essentially. Really? Uh, yeah, an HTML okay. page. And an Ethernet connection. Um, and um, this is a little weatherproof. Uh, thing to put over it to run your Ethernet cable, and that's the configuration, which is uh, kind of um, very simple. There's not a lot to configure, but it gives you the things I need, like how to configure the the uh, pedal, um, okay. because I, you know, we increasingly do cars with the Hall effect uh, right. electronic right. throttles, and it has that. Um, and here's two motor terminals, two battery connections. Here's our uh, uh, controls interface, basically, and um, and that's pretty much it. It's a heavy, solid it unit. Yeah. Um, it, there's no uh, fragile parts to uh, for you to drop and mangle. These are no. this is a pretty good looking build, and uh, so I like the controller. I haven't run it yet. Um, we're going to try it for the first time in the Cadillac. They do uh, caution you to uh, um, um, not burn up your motor with it. It's kind of designed to burn up motors. Burn up. Okay, all right. It's a 300 kilowatt <laughs> unit. We're going to have two of them in the Cadillac for 600 kilowatt uh, that it could put out. Our battery pack is not going to be able to do no. that. Um, maybe for a second or two. Um, <laughs> our twin 11 motors would do it for a little while yep. uh, with some air blowing up their skirt, but um, uh, not for very long. Um, so this this controller could conceivably overpower it. They say it'll do 1,400 amps uh, if you'll waive the warranty uh, for uh, racing. Okay. <laughs> uh, what that basically yeah. tells me is precisely which IGBT they're using, and it's a very good one, PowerX uh, IGBT. They're 850 bucks a piece. Um, but they're pretty good, um, and uh, uh, but I would want to use them at a thousand amps. Yes, um, you, you, you kind of want a little more a component than you quite use. Right. That's how you get them to last. Yeah. Uh, we'll get it last by water cooling it, uh, taking the thousand amp limit and leaving that in place, uh, and and hopefully not hitting that very hard. But the build is. Uh, just very quality uh, base and machined uh, uh, metal, and um, um, the components inside, other than the IGBT, I don't know, but it's it's software configurable, um, and that that looks good, um, and um, and I think the right things, um, you know, obviously. Feature this will creep in. People request things, yes. but because it's in software, uh, they should yeah, they, be able they can to, have them. to provide them. Yeah. And I think that's. Uh, I've heard rumors that they're going to come up, come out with a uh, Soliton Junior uh, to try okay. to get a wider market. I don't see the point. Um, uh, everybody, everybody wants something less expensive. Um, you know, let let the. Uh, um, existing uh, controllers that uh, handle the lower powers have that part of the market. I think they're in the right thing. Go for the top and try to do the the Zilla killer. And uh, and and this is currently in production and available. They're a small company. Um, they're kind of dependent on some sales to stay with it. But they've got a number of the EV component guys yes. uh, uh, carrying their line and. Uh, I think this has got some life if it doesn't just, it would have to blow up my face to uh, be a loser. Yeah, no, I, I uh, think. The configuration, the, the wiring, the way it's laid out, the build, 
I mean, it's a big unit, but that's that's okay. Gotcha. I'm yeah. all right with that. Uh, uh, I, I, you know, my eyes aren't that good. I like big terminals and things that <laughs> yeah, I can see. <laughs> and I'll, obviously, I'm in favor of D1. software configurability. Yeah. They've got a guy that writes their software. The um, only thing I know him as is Q from a, from a uh, oh. forum. But yeah. uh, uh, the yeah. uh, uh, that's a, a big part of this uh, is the software development. And, but that's a big part of the future for it. Uh, they can add features um, as needed. And, uh, and so, uh, and the firmware upgrade on this is nothing. Uh, I was flipping through the manual. I got to tell you, I was a technical writer for 25 years and this is, uh, um, you know, most of what I see in EV land is not very good. This isn't bad. It's, okay, It's good. basic. They ought to, you know, spend a little money on that, but, um, Good enough, huh? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay with it. So we're going to welcome Avnetics mm -hmm. um, as a sponsor of the contest, and this is the controller you're going to get. I think it'll make a dandy mate for that Warp 9. I think so, too. By the way, uh, I think George likes our contest concept. Really? I got an email doing. from him this week, our net gain Warp 9 with the 26 new features and so forth. Yes. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. We've got them. Um, I bought one, in fact. Uh, we, he contributed one, and I bought another one that we're going to use on the original Speedster as an upgrade with that new transmission, if you'll ever get it in. And um, that's uh, kind of exciting. Uh, but he uh, says, and, and this is borne out, a lot of the submissions I read, they really are planning <coughs> larger vehicles and uh, one and eleven inch. Okay, that may I mean it makes sense. And uh, uh, George just said they can trade the nine in on eleven, pay the difference, and get the bigger motor, no problem. Nice. That's that's Good. pretty nice. Good job. Okay. And um, so that's uh, kind of the thing. We're still uh, working on our charger selection. Um, I'm I'm enthused about the uh, Soliton. Uh, I'm I'm equally in, enthused in this new charger, it, but they've uh, kind of run into some delays shipping me mine. Uh, the, oh, we, yeah. uh, we don't really solicit free stuff for us. We, we usually buy something first, test it, and then <laughs> yeah. talk to them about <laughs> something free for you, um, and that's okay. Um, but the um, I've never got the one I paid for. No, on and the we charger. should. Uh, and I guess they're making some last minute changes, yep. which is better than them sending it to me and me sending it back for some right. last minute for, changes. For some so last minute changes yeah. I'm gonna keep that one under my hat. It's a new one, a surprise one, and I think uh, it's gonna be a very, uh, it'll be an upscale uh, charger. Mm -hmm. uh, not, Should be a not, nice unit. It's not gonna compete with the Chinix, but nope. <clears throat> it has a lot of the features I want and without being quite the cost of a Brusa. Yeah. And, um, and again, the Brusa is like the MESDA. How would you get it repaired or? The support is definitely an issue on some of the products. No it is. No doubt about it. You want someone that's gonna be in business, gonna support the product line, even after they've gone on to new models, and mm -hmm. where you can at least send it in, get it repaired at your expense, uh, yeah. if it's past the warranty. Uh, it, the concept is to drive the car for some time. So we're going to kind of focus on that a little bit. Uh, we've got a couple other things out in the bushes already that we're still looking at. I don't know quite how to deal with them, but I, I sort of predicted this would happen. One guy has is offering to um, do the machining on an adapter and coupler. Oh, and okay. has a CAD cam system and so okay. forth to do it. Again, I, he ha kind of has to have a product that anybody could use if they wanted to for money, and he's a little hesitant about that. Um, our air conditioner guys, Tecumseh, has talked to us. They have? And yeah. um, we're, we're probably going to revisit that yeah. a little bit we're and, talking and to talk to them about an yeah. air conditioning compressor. So this contest is liable. It's, 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 it's kind of grow. taking on a yeah. life of its own. You may wind up with a car plus all the spare <laughs> no. parts already built for, for life. <laughs> I don't know where this is going. 
if we keep hearing from people, we'll keep adding to the pile until um, it's, uh, until it's over. such a good deal that I have to fill out <laughs> an entry. Right. And, uh, but the bottom line is I think we've hit a nerve. I'm glad. That's, that's really wonderful. And um, so the contest is going good. Soliton 1 from Avnetics is going to be your controller. Uh, again, we have the net gain Warp 9. Yes. Which you can upgrade to an 11 at your expense. That's good news. Uh, by paying the difference. And uh, 50, uh, mm -hmm. China Aviation Lithium Battery Company, 180 amp hour cells is where you stand right now. We're still shopping for a charger and starting to hear from some peripheral things that I uh, am struggling to come up with a reason why not. Yeah, it's coming and over so, the transom, and it sounds like some pretty uh, some pretty nice parts. So. so we're off and going on a contest. That's uh, that's all good news. Great. Net Gain Motors, home of the Warp, Trans Warp, and Impulse Motors, introduced the improved Warp Nine motor. The Warp Nine is a nine and a quarter diameter series wound DC motor with a double ended shaft featuring 26 improvements for 2010. Externally, the terminal studs have been enlarged from 3 8 to half inch diameter. Bigger is better. On the inside, a larger commutator, new brush composition, and split brush design with heavier springs handle even higher voltages and currents than before. Our new fan increases airflow by almost 50% over typical paddle style fans. And all this translates into improved performance. For even more performance or larger applications, take a look at NetGain's Warp 11 motor. An 11 and 3 quarter diameter series wound DC motor for even greater torque and power. Since 2002, NetGain Motors has been leading the EV industry with precision, performance, and price. Visit us at go-ev.com. NetGain Motors, warp power to go. EV, uh, this is uh, Matt Hauber, our new transmission expert. Hello again. Uh, <laughs> who's been uh, telling me a lot more about what I've been doing wrong. And uh, that's led to some interesting results. We've had quite a weekend. We're waiting parts on the Cadillac Escalade. Mm -hmm. Jim Husted's uh, working on our motors, and I don't want to go further with that. Um, we've shipped our brake assembly from the Smart to Dennis at Crystal Light, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he's in Germany right now. Uh, for a couple of months, but he's uh, uh, working on the design of our smart hub motors, and we sent him the whole brake assembly. And I'm kind of excited he's going to make the motors actually replace the brake hub. That's, that's going to be really nice. Yeah, yeah. and then our brakes mm -hmm. are kind of untouched, our mm -hmm. parking brake and the whole thing. So we're kind of in between uh, weeding parts. Um, this weekend, after a uh, little bit of my uh, homemade whiskey and some stag That's beer, it. which Matt has uh, de developed taste for. You don't have stag in San Diego. I've never noticed it before, at least. Yeah. I, I'm getting into that stag beer. <laughs> no, it's kind of a regional thing. Mm -hmm. You have to come here to the mm -hmm. Midwest. So I'm going to have to order some in from there. We decided to get a little liquored up and play with high voltage. And uh, <laughs> the results have been mixed. Mm -hmm. um, this started with something I've wanted to do for some time. Matt rigged it up for me. This is the um, magnetic pickup from the original Mini Cooper uh, motor. This sits right behind the flywheel, and you have a little pickup here. So Matt come up with the idea of putting this on a drill and wiring it up. So I wired it up. And he spun the drill, and guess what? We got a tachometer signal. It did. And better yet, what did we get? We got power steering. Yeah, the E-Pass came mm -hmm. right up. At mm -hmm. about 600 RPM, it kicks in. And uh, I've been saying that that firm steering didn't bother me. Well, a couple of laps with good steering, <laughs> and I guess it must have been bothering me. A little me, bit, huh? <laughs> a little bit that different was now. Cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we... Uh, had been talking about how to get that back on our system. Of course, our MES DEA motor has no tail shaft. Um, and so we got to revisit our adapter thing. But I had a, a better idea. Why don't we hook up the tachometer output out of our 10600 controller? And will you believe it worked? It did. 
Uh, it didn't really work. Our tack at about 6,000 RPM showing 1,500. And uh, so, so... We had power steering the whole time. But we, we had did. to run it up to uh, 600 times 4, about 2,500 RPM to get the power steering to kick in. Mm -hmm. And it kind of drops out after five seconds yeah, of no true. activity yeah. and so mm -hmm. forth. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't real, but we did get out on the road and get it working and did some driving. Uh, I also found some magic changes to the um, regenerative braking and extended the uh, time on the braking from two seconds to three right. seconds mm -hmm. and up the uh, regen torque from 50% of motor torque to 70% and decreased the window uh, on the uh, accelerator from 20, the first 20% to 10. Mm -hmm. The car was driving great. I had power steering, kind of a tack indication. It, it wasn't right. It honestly has to be one of the best feeling cars I've ever been in. I mean, it, it's great. As soon as you let off the gas, it had a little bit of a hold back, just like a gas motor would. I mean, mm -hmm. it was, it was really, really nice. The brakes felt nice. like power mm -hmm. brakes. Mm -hmm. I did take Matt out on the freeway. Uh, I buckled and, up. And he's fearless, <laughs> 80, 80, 90 miles an hour. He's just like partying like a rock star. Might have been the stag. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Probably. That's how he gets me into this stuff. <laughs> and uh, so, um, you know, the, it was great news. This car is uh, still a fabulous car. But at this point, we had it driving really like it came from the factory. It was very nice. Which yeah. I told Brain is like driving a Porsche, but mm -hmm. it looks like a Mini. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were pretty excited, so excited that we tried to fix the tack output. Brandon, where's the book on the tin? Somebody moved it on me. I have to read them this formula. It's just too precious for words. Thank you, buddy. If I can find this, the tack output on the Thames, and, and understand this is probably the worst documentation and the most confusing configuration that I've ever seen on an electric device. Um, and since I started with modems and stuff, that's saying something. <laughs> um, where was that? 54, I think. The table of contents is all. Ah, the tachometer is set, set, set up. The, um, there is a variable where you can change the tach output frequency. The frequency out in hertz is equal to the motor speed in RPM divided by 60 times 64 raised to the fourth power uh, divided by this um, P265 parameter. Uh, uh, or times the P265 parameter, divided by 2048, and times 116. <laughs> okay. I don't even know what all that is. Oh, I thought you had it figured out. My wife's a ma <laughs> got a bachelor's in mathematics. I showed it to her. She didn't know what I was telling her. In any event, you can set it for 0 to 2047. And um, we tried several, did get the tack needle to move around, mm -hmm. but never did get it to um, even partially represent mm -hmm. what our RPM was. Mm -hmm. We have a 64-bit, actually two 64-bit encoders in the motor. And AC motors, um, it's a little difficult to explain, particularly when you're like me and don't entirely understand it. But the phase rotation on the motor and the position of the rotor, the rotor is never going to quite catch the phase rotation that you apply to the motor. And the difference is termed slip. Mm -hmm. And the controller has to be able to determine what this slip is um, because it can cause it to get to be a little closer with more current mm -hmm. um, or not as close with less current. And, and so that's basically how you control the motor. Um, to get that angle of the motor, you have two 64-bit encoders 90 degrees out of phase. And so it doesn't matter where it is, by comparing the two encoder outputs, you can determine the angle of the rotor in the motor. 
Um, well, a 64-bit. This wheel has 58 teeth on it mm -hmm. and a big uh, open spot. That is how your um, computer in the car, it's called a DME, but it's your, most cars, they call it an ECU engine control mm -hmm. unit. Mm -hmm. But th this is the brains of the, the engine on the Mini. Um, it has 58 teeth. Now the two missing teeth is where it would determine ze the zero point. And by counting pulses, you can determine the, the angle of the maybe drive the, shaft. Maybe top dead center of the, of the gas motor or something. Pre uh -huh. Precisely. Mm -hmm. Or some arbitrary point. It, if you pick one, mm -hmm. that's a point, and, um, and this gap would be lined up with it. And then 58 teeth is uh, pretty close to 64 mm -hmm. bits. Mm -hmm. So I had this brilliant <laughs> idea. <laughs> Which w really did sound better with a six-pack of stag and a couple of homemade whiskeys. It was sounding good to me. I thought it was going to work. That we I could go to into the Tim's encoder, and there's a little connector with these little levers here where the encoder's plugged in, and you simply have a, a 7.4-volt signal uh, that goes to the encoder, a ground that goes to the encoder, and two channels back, a green and white wire. We'll just steal one of those mm -hmm. and feed it into the, um, the DME. Mm -hmm. uh, why wouldn't it work? Why wouldn't it work? Mm -hmm. Would you believe, to, to my uh, undying ecstasy, it did. I had a real tack that was pretty close to the RPM. I don't, I, you know, we didn't have a way set up to measure it. We would have been able to pursuing this. Um, and we would have had pretty pretty close to our actual RPM, and better yet, my steering then kicked in at a much lower mm -hmm. RPM. It kind of changed how the motor ran. Mm -hmm. It didn't really sound right, and I decided that we were probably loading the signal. So I put a uh, oh a six and a half k resistor uh, between the input and ground um, to kind of. Uh, you know, not, not overdrive or DME. Mm -hmm. um, tried several at about 2.8K. Uh, that seemed to work pretty well. Uh, there is something with the DME, and it probably has nothing to do with the signal, that it would work for about five or 10 minutes even, and then mm -hmm. just magically drop out mm -hmm. the tachometer signal. Steering's still working. It still has the pulse signal, but it's not driving the tach, mm -hmm. and we don't know why. Uh, it may be that it needs another signal to compare it to, or it's throwing it's not, a fault. It's not missing a tooth like that one. <laughs> right, it's not missing a tooth like this one. Uh -huh. um, that, that sort of thing. We're not sure. Um, but it would drop out, and so I kept fooling with it. Uh, and uh, eventually I decided, mm -hmm. well, we'll put a little opto-isolator on this. And, uh, I said, what's that? <laughs> yeah, which should have been my first clue that this is what we're in too deep here. Uh, the, uh, and um, the bottom line is, I think we blew up the whole goddamn car. Suddenly, we couldn't make anything work. Mm -hmm. The motor wouldn't even come up. Mm -hmm. And um, we've tried dozens of things in the interim to... Um, fix that, and we're not sure at this point what our failure is. But we are convinced we want that <laughs> electronic <laughs> steering yep, back yep. and that tachometer. Yep. <laughs> and uh, the, um, there isn't enough whiskey in the world to keep me from wanting that mm -hmm. at this not point, that, because this it. car drove great. Mm -hmm. And I'm so sure there we are. Mm -hmm. What are the possibilities? I don't think we burn up the motor. It's pretty hardy. This is an SFK 64K encoder um, that you would find in the motor. We were able to get one right away. There's not much we can do out of the motor other than spin it, and that didn't really do anything. We're throwing, if anybody knows, an A3 power fault code, mm -hmm. which is defined in the TIMS manual as, as the A3 power, power 
um, alarm. Oh. They call it an alarm. Mm -hmm. And and no other text on the topic. Mm -hmm. I've emailed MESDA, and then they're typically profoundly supportive fashion. They haven't even bothered to reply. Mm -hmm. um, it's 10 weeks to get another controller. Uh, this is the encoder that we would replace on the motor. Um, I went all through the, the controller. Uh, it talks on the serial bus. It will not drive the motor, and I cannot reset this A3 power the alarm. Contactors engaging everything, but yes. uh, it's just, so you hit the gas, it does nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And so my beautiful uh, car with 2,500 miles on it now uh, and winter coming. And by the way, I turned on oh. the heat. What did you think, Matt? It was very nice. It was very nice. Was, I mean, I rolled down my window. It was getting too hot. Yeah. It, was, it was perfect. And it was just it was a chilly know. evening. Yeah, it, it was. We're in was. October here. And so we're a little bit confused. Uh, we're always a little bit confused, <laughs> but that's not the point. Uh, we're not sure what the problem is, but I think it's the controller. Matt thinks it's the encoder. The problem with the encoder, we still have 7.4 volts coming out of the controller to it, our ground, our two channels were fine. Um, could be, but there's not much there mm -hmm. um, to burn up. Um, and so I, it's uh, simply a couple of wheels with some built-in sensors, and uh, we may have overloaded them. Mm -hmm. It's possible, but I don't think so. Um, the controller, on the other hand, has it does talk on the serial port. Uh, it will not provide an output. There's no visibly burn sections. The power section is not visibly stressed at all. No. Um, so we can't find anything visual. Um, no bubbling components or anything like and that. And we took the you know we took it down pretty far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, magnifying glasses or it, nothing. Yeah, with, with mm -hmm. magnifiers and of course it's surface mount stuff. And um, but I think it's the controller. Mm -hmm. I think there's zero possibility that we uh, hurt the motor. Could be the encoder yet. I was really hoping the encoder because <laughs> it was yeah. it was the easiest thing to check and it probably one of the easiest fixes where it only well, cost a couple hundred bucks. Well, Matt, he yeah. he wanted to hook this up to drill. Matt likes drills. I do like drills. And, uh, and hammers. You wanted to hook <laughs> this up to a drill. I haven't seen that part and yet. hook it all up and see if we at least got a response mm -hmm. out of the motor. Not, it's not entirely a bad uh, concept, but again, this thing is capable of doing some checks that would happen so fast and it would throw that alarm so quickly that I, I, I would say we have not proven that the encoder is okay. faultless. Um, mm -hmm. that, that was an interesting test, but uh, it would only be interesting if we got a bump. Mm -hmm. We were mm -hmm. just looking for a bump, some just reaction anything. to the accelerator. A little hiccup, yeah, anything. Mm -hmm. And we got nothing, which would imply the controller, but doesn't really eliminate the encoder, actually. Okay. okay. Um, things happen in the electronic world somewhat happen faster than they do in ours. Okay. So we still have a mystery. Ten weeks to get a controller from Europe, a Victor, of course, is unavailable and useless, which is where we bought it. If we bought a new controller, it would be ten weeks. So at this point, it remains an unknown, whether it's the encoder or the controller. But I don't like this controller. Mm -hmm. It puts out good power, but the documentation is terrible. The support's non-existent. You can't get the answer to the simplest question. Um, you can't get parts for it. And we've learned a valuable lesson on this build, and we will not repeat it. We're not going to do any more um, builds of any kind that you can't get the product, get it replaced, get parts for it, and get somebody to answer a question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However exotic or cool it might look and be the perfect thing for it, if it's somebody who has done a prototype and would build you one for $34,000 mm -hmm. but has really no hope of ever going into production on it, mm -hmm. um, 
we're we're just not going to fool with it. Well, we're getting plenty of emails of controllers and motors that we could possibly use, but it's one-off things that are going to cost twenty grand each. And what what good is that going to do, you guys? I've talked to um, James um, at uh, Tridium oh, yeah. in Australia. They've got a very interesting controller, which it would be analogous to this. Um, would probably do this motor very nicely. Um, they're trying to get started. They've done 25 of them and sold 25 of them. Mm -hmm. And they're, they've ordered another 25. This is the low volume type stuff. If these guys don't make it, you're orphaned again. It, he's right, right now right. waiting for parts that he's having terrible difficulties getting for the controller. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is not a good sign that this is a controller that I want to then buy from Australia mm -hmm. from somebody who may or may not make another 25 or may just go out of business. Mm -hmm. And so, but in any event, it's 10 or 12 weeks to get one of those. So we're um, uh, kind of shopping for a controller. Um, Matt has talked to some people at Reinhardt. What are they telling you? Well, Larry Reinhardt, he has a 100 kilowatt unit that uh, has actually been pretty, pretty well proven. I mm -hmm. um, showed you the documentation of that last night. Mm -hmm. and it looks good. The guy is very knowledgeable, Larry Reinhardt. Mm -hmm. He's uh, been great with customer service. Uh, he's teaming up with Remy right now, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they might be coming up with a package deal as well, mm -hmm. uh, a motor and controller. Uh -huh. I looked at the manual and the spec sheet. It's I, an ideal replacement and would, you know, I think work great with this motor. We might have to have him do some tuning work on that, but... Uh, uh, he's even said maybe they've already tested that. They've already done our motor, yeah. Be a direct bolt in there. The connector's really nice, right mm -hmm. outside where you can get to them. Really nice looking case. Here's Small the biggest enclosure. attraction. The uh, uh, Chevy, uh, what, Escape? Has a hybrid um, transmission in it mm -hmm. with a couple of motors from Ramey. Um, Ramey does... Uh, Electric parts, uh, they, they were originally uh, uh, Delco, Ramey, mm -hmm, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Delco, Ramey. And uh, so they're one of the largest electrical component suppliers. They're, I, I suppose the British have Lucas and the uh, Germans have Bosch, and we had Delco, Ramey mm -hmm. as one of the largest uh, component suppliers uh, for automotive uses in the world. They make these motors that go into a transmission yeah. and they're oil bathed mm -hmm. but they're they're kind of interesting motors a lot of guys have been talking about because you can buy these transmissions for cheap on ebay mm -hmm. and taking the motors out of them and using them it, there's a, actually a lot of problems there you have to have a controller number yeah. one yeah. and you have it's an oil bath um, it is it has to actually sit in oil just like it would in a transmission that's how it gets its cooling and also its lubrication for the mm -hmm. bearings uh -huh. but you're saying that Rein, Reinhardt and Ramey are kind of forming an alliance to yeah. do a little bit higher numbers of this when uh, when I talked with Larry he said that uh, Remy is actually helping the tooling effort Mm -hmm. To get them to you know more up to production status, mm -hmm. to get them uh, get them going. So he, Remy's helping them out, and uh, Reinhardt's been out there for a while, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, they they've never yeah. really gone into production on these controllers. They've made a, made some. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he's kind of he's still about six weeks out on a you know six to eight weeks out on a, a normal controller. We're gonna try to see if we can get one a little a little quicker, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so he, he doesn't just have them laying around yet. Um, he does have a couple other controllers, uh, 150, and he's going all the way up. He's going 250 kilowatt eventually. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it seems to be the most promising next step mm -hmm. for, for this, uh, for the AC world. I mean, he, it really does look pretty good. I don't Matt's see a big fan of Siemens and their controllers and motors and so forth. We've been having a little email exchange, although I see them every day. Mm -hmm. About about these things, almost all of them are 500 or more commonly 650 volts, and that seems to be the direction they're going with the Ramey uh, on the higher side motors. Anyway, um, it's just not a practical voltage for um, a conversion effort. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, 650 volts is 200 
hundred amp cells. Uh -huh. Now you have to be able to do three or four hundred amps, mm -hmm. so you're at, at least a hundred amp hour cell. And, and when you're getting into that kind of voltage, you're actually the windings are, are smaller wire, isn't it, to go higher voltage, less amps? Well, that's why they like high voltage. Mm -hmm. Then they can use smaller uh, conductors and so forth and deal with lower currents uh -huh. to do the same amount of power. Mm -hmm. But for us, uh, this gets to be a 2,000 pound battery pack and it's kind of like stacking pennies at about three feet. The whole column starts mm -hmm. to, so managing the, the pack and keeping them, uh, you know, balance it isn't a problem at 26. At 112 in here, it mm -hmm. starts to, you know, you have to get the cells all going in the same direction. You would almost and at 200, I, mm -hmm. and what would we use for a charger, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And what would we use for a DC to DC converter? Mm -hmm. And our AC compressors out of the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our heaters out of the game. Mm -hmm. Nobody's making components for electric vehicles right. at 650 volts. Mm -hmm. And so we, we can't really do that. But this, um, the 100, the PK100 or whatever it is they call it at Reinhardt, is 100 volts to 360 oh, volts. That's the well, that's in my frequency band mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. That I can deal with. And uh, and you get up, uh, you know, 300 volts. You, you, you can deal with smaller currents, lighter cables, and so forth. That's actually an advantage. advantage mm -hmm. But I can still get a charger mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. I can still build a DC to DC converter out of those Vicor bricks. Um, you know, our AC compressor works on it, mm -hmm. um, and so we're, we're back in the ball game. So we're hoping um, to get something from Reinhardt, but we're looking at all the available options. I would love to ditch the Tim 600 um, controller and that dependence, which I have no dependence on them because I can't get any reaction right. from them at all. It's just, I'm an orphan. And you own one. Imagine trying to get some answers when you didn't own one. Yeah, right, I mean, right. It's, it's, yeah. The, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're trying to come up with another uh, controller. The Reinhardt uh, is showing up. Uh, David Coy's got it on, what's his, uh, uh, EV... Uh, EV, uh, EV Drive, or uh, not David Coy. Uh. Yeah, David Coy's got a new uh, uh, EV components uh, type thing. Oh, um, um, are, are we talking about current EV tech? Current EV tech. Okay, current EV and, tech. And he's offering a Reinhardt. I don't know if he can actually get them yet, but... Uh, Along with the old uh, Siemens Ford motor. Right, mm -hmm. the Siemens Ford motor and uh, for $15,000. Mm -hmm. So these remain kind of expensive things. I am getting over my fascination with AC, uh, guys. It's, oh, yeah. It's just... Well, look how much we've done, and what are we back at the Escalade with DC? Mm -hmm. you know, right. Warp motors. Well, there's a right reason. I'm tired started. of being an orphan and yeah. dealing with it to get so little. Um, that they, it's broken out on the blog again. Some uh, guy wanting to quote me the laws of physics. Um, the, um, the laws of physics don't change, but uh, some moronic understandings of them and misapplications. We've tested the regen. Uh, it may not be up to your rigorous scientific standards. It is up to mine. We did three drivers, two different cars, regen on, regen off, different drives. Mm -hmm. um, the, the reason there was a difference is because Brian was so bad at driving an EV. Not be, when he would use the regen, he'd get down to the baseline where I was without it. Mm -hmm. So for him, yeah, he got a 15% gain. Mm -hmm. That's because he had a 15% loss starting <laughs> out. The lithium foot. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so that was uh, uh, apparently uh, some of you missed the, some of the point of even the, the report of the success of Regen. Yes, it, it will make electricity, but it's a pretty meager gain mm -hmm. uh, for all this trouble. Mm -hmm. And I've actually heard from a couple of the OEMs that have been fairly frank, uh, quite privately, uh, and I suppose it's their jobs, but it's basically a self-fulfilling prophecy. You believe region is important, it's easy enough for them to put in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For competitive reasons, how can they offer a car without it, even when some of them know it isn't <laughs> going to do you any good? Uh -huh, uh -huh. 
but because you think it's important, they're going to put it in anyway. That's why all the OEMs are putting it in. It's so you buy the car. Mm -hmm. If one car has it and the other one doesn't, and everybody in the population believes that's how you get more range, mm -hmm. it's a must-have feature, and it's not that hard to implement. We run into this a lot <laughs> run, with a lot of things I've even told you. No, yeah, no, you get into right. these closed yeah. loops, and they, yeah, we, uh, we get pretty set in our ways. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, we take a little fresh look. Uh, what's it doing, and why is it doing that? Mm -hmm. And uh, at some point, I don't have to have the ultimate answer. The EV uh, elect, uh, regenerative braking is no longer a design consideration here. And by saying that, we can have it or not have it as it's convenient. It's just not a priority. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mm -hmm. do anything for us range-wise. It, it really doesn't accomplish. You know why I still like it? Why is that? I can have power brakes without a noisy vacuum pump. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's why I still like it. <laughs> save some pads a little bit, maybe. Well, now <laughs> this is this is something in the forums. They're going to save their twelve dollar brake pads and with their fourteen thousand dollar drivetrain. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. Why don't I get really signed on to that? Well, and I, I even heard that uh, you know the brake dust was a big pollution issue, and there, I, you know you can read all that, and it's it's kind of like I don't really think those little pads are really putting off that much more pollution to everything else. But not, not compared to mm -hmm. 19 pounds a, a gallon of uh, gas mm -hmm. um, of uh, gases and nitrous oxides, carbon monoxide, <laughs> a few uh, brake dust particles. Uh, you know, campfire out back. You know, I, I, I I'm not going to get. All excited about that, but the, they're designed as a wear component. We could make brake pads that didn't wear. Mm -hmm. They also wouldn't be very good brakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they wouldn't be very good at stopping you. That wear is the friction that uh, that stops you. So I don't want to replace the brake pads with a fourteen thousand dollar drivetrain. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's not the point. It's just aesthetically the sound of that vacuum pump to get power brakes. Mm -hmm is ugly mm -hmm. and so so I, I still think regen has a place but it's not to extend range or save my batteries mm -hmm. it's just to make the brakes uh, more pleasant so when i say it's no longer a design consideration it's no longer a design priority it's just a nice to have mm -hmm. um, but if you're weighing a uh, six thousand dollar dc system against a fifteen thousand dollar ac system to get the same power, and, and your mission is regenerative braking, it's a loser. Yeah. It doesn't work out. Uh, Which is definitely surprising. Mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So let's, uh, we've, we've had to, just at the point where uh, the weather's turning colder, <laughs> and the, I need the Mini. It's running it's, great. Uh, it's it was running, running great. great. <laughs> it's got great environmentals. Uh -huh. uh, the heat and defrost air, air was just, was he was in. like, you know, in stag heaven, because oh, uh, the heater worked. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And sometimes it is the small things that are important. Yeah. Um, and creature comforts, I'm not above. Um, but that's, uh, so now we've completely torn down the car. With, with this particular car, it's almost, you could, if you were to take somebody out that didn't necessarily, you know, know that much about cars, I don't know if you could have told the difference between mm -hmm. a gas car and an electric. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit of noise, but you, it's almost road noise. These, these newer gas cars are pretty quiet anyway. Yes, they are. So this is the, you know, by far the closest thing I've ever seen. Like I, I, I think it'd be hard for somebody to tell the difference mm -hmm. just sitting in the passenger seat. Well, I could tell the difference when it was all positive. I was in third gear and then I was in fourth gear and that's the only two I ever used. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we definitely want to get, get this back. Uh, I'm. Uh, willing to uh, upgrade the controller anyway and um, but we may find out it's the encoder matt let's go uh, you being the transmission expert we're going to have to do some mods on our adapter because i want my tack now yeah, yeah. now that you've shown it to me don't take it back away <laughs> i need right. my steering and my tack all right let's go take a look at that great
adapter plate or clutch, which uh, has uh, gotten a little smoke. <laughs> there was an There's incident I didn't, didn't mention to anybody <laughs> till until yesterday. We were going to take it apart and they would see it. Anyway. Uh. <laughs> First gear, I kind of stepped on it one day without, you know, with the clutch already in. And there was a lot of bad smells in the car. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it smelled a whole lot like burning clutch. And uh, it turns out, turns out that's a good it guess. Was. You're right. Yeah, it, you're it, right. it was burning clutch, guess. yeah. <laughs> this is our adapter. Here is uh, a, a pigtail with our magnetic pickup that we need with our little magic wheel. And with that, we're kind of in a little past my pay grade. Uh, these adapters and uh, the machine tolerances and uh, of the drivetrain, uh, when these guys, even when they describe to me what they want to do, I don't know what they're saying. I don't think they do either. We, we don't either. I was problem. just going to add that, Jack. We have but, a slice. But it sounds, sounds good. like sounds, gibberish sounds to me. No, it sounds <laughs> good it sounds to you all. <laughs> it sounds like gibberish to me. It's just if we can make this a little shorter and this a little longer and this bottom out and not lose the, I, I can't make it out. So why don't we describe what we're going to do. What I'm going to do is take the motor part, put a new uh, encoder in it just in case. Uh, we'll save the other one as a spare in case that wasn't it. In case it wasn't it, yeah. And I may be able to hook it up to the controller and see if that uh, uh, makes it turn, um, you know, using some some little wires and stuff to just see if I can bump it. But we decided to tear everything down anyway. I think it'd be a great time mm -hmm. to upgrade the controller. But I want my tachometer yep. and my yep. uh, steering. And so what are you guys... Uh, going to work out here to um, simulate uh, what happened on the front of that motor uh, to spin this and pick it up, given our existing Brazilian dollar adapter plate. Well, I think if you, if you weren't with us when we, when we first built all this, we've got a, we've uh, emulated the flange here, and this is from the, from the flywheel attachment uh, here, this is basically what the end of the crankshaft looks like on the uh, on the uh, engine for the Mini Cooper. This crank signal generator was on here, face like. If we got to get it lined up, it's something like this. One thing we don't have to do is hog out a bunch of uh, material. This is all Which going. Is what we were thinking we might have. To, yeah, know, we, we hadn't looked good. at this adapter in a while, so <laughs> we're we're pretty good. So the the mm -hmm. mission is to put this in the place where it was originally on the uh, end of the crankshaft, put this sensor uh, in there. We've kind of marked it along. We have to provision it to be able to get it in, get it out, get the wire on. We don't want to put all this together and just you know mm -hmm. need to mm -hmm. plug it in and forget to leave room for that. Um, we are going to leave the machining, though, to machinists. Yeah. Uh, this is going over to uh, Lucian at Cape Precision Machine. Mm -hmm. We like Lucian. Yeah, and part of this we are going to make his problem. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. We've we've done all the noodling that we can do, so mm -hmm. now it's uh, off to the guy with uh, with micrometers and and uh, mm -hmm. and machines. Mm -hmm. So that is the mission. When this comes back, is that we will be able to uh, have this uh, uh, mm -hmm. crank generator, mm -hmm. the signal generator, on there, uh, clearing the flywheel, knowing all that. Uh, new, I suppose we're going to have to have a new um, clutch for Jack. Uh, <laughs> I, guess we're gonna have to get, I guess we're going to have to get a racing clutch for uh, <laughs> three stage for, for, for Speed Racer over here. Mm -hmm. But uh, and and I will admit that I, I shouldn't leave on Friday and come back on Monday. It, you, I just used to leave Jack alone. <laughs> now uh, we, you know, we've got Matt living in the little right house the next corner. door mm -hmm. and a, the ample supply of alcohol. So I. I <laughs> I feel two, bad. Two without a <laughs> for 48 hours is I feel, not good. I feel huh? bad. Mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. You guys like wrenching, so this has, has caused us to actually tear the entire Mini Cooper <laughs> apart again. So yeah. you're, you're going to see some wrenching mm -hmm. uh, for the next couple of episodes. So mm -hmm. there you go. So how are you going to get this in here again? How does that work? This whole thing needs to be recessed down. There's a notch, and actually only half of this sensor is, is, is actually picked up by this exciter ring. So for the most part, it's uh, without this harness in here, 
How did I get that out of there? No, we have to have the harness. Well, the <laughs> harness will be there next time here. But essentially, that's that's what we're trying to do. But it's, we need but to get the flywheel back on. It needs to be, yeah, this, it's actually recessed here to clear the flywheel, just like it was in the gas car. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, whatever we do, we machine a slot, which would be great, so we could just continue to pull this, put a little screwdriver right in there and pull it straight out. But uh, the only thing we would need is just a tab that this can still screw back into. And we can, you know, even still have a, you know, part of that uh, cutout mm -hmm. to reach our screw right there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's not really a whole lot of adjustment here. Uh, there's a washer. This is actually the perfect distance that it sat on the gas motor. This does have to be just, uh, you know, what would you call that? How, how thick is that? Oh, um, <laughs> three millimeters. Yeah, it's okay, not much. so we're yeah. we're looking at about a three millimeter difference or distance between this, the pickup and the exciter ring to get enough signal. And that was justified by how far I held the drill and yeah, the, and, the, uh, the, and the our, sensor. Our, our drill got, yeah. sensor guy. Yeah, exciter uh -huh. ring is pretty <laughs> thin, but it does take up space. What's that going to do to us? Is that how critical is that adjustment of the? Um, um, flywheel face to the transmission. Well, well what, we've, what we've done, you know, originally was we wanted to make sure that this flange, uh, where it made it to the flywheel, was in exactly the same mm -hmm. place that it was on the gas motor. So we, we know that the clutch is operating properly when you're not slipping it uphill. <laughs> um, but so we don't want to take any chances. We want to get it all back where it right was. Where it was. Mm -hmm. So we're going to, again, leave it to, to Lucien, um, the machinist, that we want to make sure now that this surface, mm -hmm. when we put that on, mm -hmm. is exactly where it should be in relation so that our flywheel uh, and our clutch are exactly where they should be in the plane to yeah. each other. If, cool. we, if we don't make up the difference here and drop this down, the, farther, the thicker that this goes, we're actually beginning to, to uh, disengage the clutch. The further we, we make this flywheel come out, uh, the more it's pressing more against it's the, the throw out bearing. Right. It's actually disengaging it. So that's why it's important, especially we're having some slippage, some slippage issues right now. Right. Um, it, you know, if anything, the other way might not hurt as much, but right. this way, it, the way we're going, we, we do need we, to we, recalculate we take some that. space out. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's identical to what you, the gas motor, I measured it myself, this and the, and the Good. original flange, you've got that perfect. and. Uh, so we're going to combine kind of a couple things. I'm going to replace this encoder. Mm -hmm. Probably take this to the local guy and see if he can Let's ring out if, the windings. Make yeah. sure. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the motor. No, but let's but make sure while it's out anyway. While yeah. we've got it out. Mm -hmm. We're going to launch another project to get this exciter ring and magnetic pickup um, on the uh, adapter. Mm -hmm. And um, we got to get hold of high performance mini guys, see if we can get you a clutch disc. <laughs> yeah, three, three stage, <laughs> yeah. three stage clutch. Three stage <laughs> really? like racing clutch? Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, <laughs> looking like we're going to have Well, to. be sure not to uh, not get anything inexpensive. No, no okay. We, that doesn't exist. <laughs> high performance racing and inexpensive. Mm -hmm. like, Mutually exclusive. I like converting cars and making videos. <laughs> These guys like to spend somebody else's money. <laughs> that's, that's what they like. <laughs> So that's uh, that's what we'll do is get a uh, really get a pretty cool one. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm a sucker for it too. That's why yeah, I get away right. with it. Why would um, you go halfway when you can have top of the line? Sure. Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Even if it is thoughtlessly needless <laughs> overkill. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> but I did make some some dust there, so just check make sure our clutch is working operator yeah. uh, operating properly. Whatever we do, and um, and so we're gonna do three or four things at the same time here uh, in kind of a shotgun approach to troubleshooting since we don't know what A3 power uh, failure uh, no, alarm that's, that's is. No, that's amazing. A3. Uh, yeah, A3 power failure is an mm -hmm. A3 power failure. Mm -hmm. at, at every time. Yeah, <laughs> it's defined precisely. A3 yeah, power says failure. says right there. <laughs> they have a <laughs> software reset we can do on the laptop, a hardware reset, which I added a pin to do that, and none of it resets. None of it resets. Mm -hmm. no. um, and so there's, there's something uh, critically wrong with the controller. Or the encoder is still a possibility. Right, still okay. um, what I would like to do in an ideal world is replace the encoder, mm -hmm. um, get a, uh, I'd like to try that Reinhardt. Okay. If, if you can talk me to get one here, but okay. it's not, 
I'm 55 years old. This has to be while I'm still on Earth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that they want to make one someday. Okay. Doesn't do me any good. Mm -hmm. so. It doesn't do our viewers any good. Mm -hmm. But I am encouraged by this talk of a partnership with Ramey mm -hmm. to get into kind of an that, AC that solution would, give us some made power, by yeah. a couple of people here in the United States that would, in fact, sell you one the, if you applied money to them. And the right. fact that Remy is actually giving them quite a bit of money for tooling is a promising. It's very promising. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's that, uh, it oh, sounds, yeah. sounds like Remy's got, a, it's called a hairpin motor, by the way. And okay. it, it's actually kind of an innovative design. I'll put something up here on the screen, okay. one of your graphics of how this is done. But it, it's basically a winding technique that is very compact. Um, and compact uh, in, in a motor, the closer together you can get those, the more concentrated those magnetic lines of flux and the more powerful the motor. And um, so they've found a way to do that. It's pretty cool. cool. We'll look at and that. How many kilowatts was that HVH 250? Uh, I thought it was 90 something, wasn't it? The uh, 87, kilowatts was it 87 kilowatts continuous. The um, but they have motors up to. Uh, 250 kilowatts. Again, wow. you start yeah. to get into 650 volts. I, <laughs> you know, after dealing with a 375 volt mini, that's that's as much it's, battery pack as I want right, to manage. Right. Mm -hmm. And you start to get into some weight yeah. considerations yeah. because you still have to put 200 out some, some current. Mm -hmm. uh, with right. these, at this voltage, we still have to put out between three and 400 amps. And so a 100 amp hour cell is about our minimum that we can, to, to can deal with. Yeah. Well, 100 amp hour cells times, in this case, 112, is, uh, it turned out to be 800 pounds of batteries. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of wiring. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, but that's about as high as I would want to go. I do not see ever doing a 650 volt car. Mm -hmm. Okay. What you actually get into, and, and by the way, I'm not, uh, as in most things, I make it sound like it's uh, simply a personality flaw, but um, I didn't invent a lot of this stuff. Prius has a 200-something volt pack. Mm -hmm. They have a 500-something volt motor. They have to do a boost circuit between the two of them. And uh, so they boost that with, with a ordinary boost circuit. Um, it's kind of like another controller uh -huh. with a, a diode and an inductor to simply raise the voltage um, from the 200 volts, where mm. they can make a lot of current, to the 500 volts, uh, where they, they need less current. Yeah. Um, and that's that's a common way of doing it. There are losses. For sure. There's component failures. Uh, and you're, you're talking about a pretty high power boost circuit to do it. And you wind up almost with two controllers. If mm -hmm. I was going to do one, would mean I'd take one of the lower uh, uh, current controllers, a three or four hundred amp controller, and um, and that's what I would use in the boost circuit for the switch, mm -hmm. and then get some some. There are some large, fast acting diodes that can can see those kinds of currents, hmm. and a coil, and you could, you could make this. Um, this this is also the solution everybody wants me to work with on the uh, super cap box, which we'll talk more about oh, yeah. later, <laughs> but. Um, it's uh, it, it it's a little bit of a problem. You can get into some pretty quickly diminishing returns on expense and so forth. Mm -hmm. so it sounds like a lot just to go with thinner wires, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and higher powers. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I would rather have a higher current device, and we'll, we can go higher voltage. We can go three hundred volts. We can go three fifty, mm -hmm. but. Above yeah. that, it starts to get to be kind of precarious on our other components and our ability yeah. to simply hold this stack oh, of pennies right. uh, mm -hmm. from falling over, mm -hmm. um, which you're doing basically with a, a series pack um, of that length, 200 cells is a, a that's lot a, that's of stuff. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the plan. Um, Simpler is always better. Yep. yep, and yep. Um, but I'd like to try that Reinhardt controller. Okay. Um, we'll probably replace this, do some tests on the motor, some further tests on the Tim 600. But my guess is we've got a, a dead controller and no support and no spares mm -hmm. and no way to get well. No. 
And what was the lead time to get the Tims? Ten weeks. Ten, ten weeks. Ten weeks. Ten weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're torn down now, so yeah. uh, let's go. Well, yeah. you got to get this car running for, your, for the winter. Yeah, bad. What are you well, going to drive? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm running out of cars to drive. Uh, the, other, the other thing, uh, I suppose we, we should... Uh, well, we can talk about some of that later. This is the, the mini uh, situation as it stands now, and that's where we're going. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm Jack Rickard with EVTV. Hello, I'm Jack Rickard with EVTV with just a brief reminder to enter our contest to win a $20,000 Dream Build pack of electric vehicle components. The dirty little secret at EVTV is we only have three viewers who view every week. And one of you is going to win $20,000 worth of EV components. But you have to enter to win. And you have to do that at httpevtv.me. Fill out that questionnaire. I know you've tried three times, but study up for it. Uh, go through the questionnaire, figure out the answers and we can get you into the game building your own electric vehicle and pretty much on our dime. Our uh, first sponsor is uh, George Hamster with NetGain. We've got a Wart 9, the very latest build, 26 improvements on this motor. It was our first motor that we used and it, we're gonna use two of them in our uh, Cadillac Escalade build. This thing's bulletproof. You can't go wrong with it, and I think it's the motor that we've selected uh, for somebody to build their dream EV. We're throwing in, George is helping me pay for it, 50 180 amp hour Kalb China Aviation Lithium Battery Company batteries. That's a 30 kilowatt pack. It'll give you 167 volts, and this motor will handle it. We're also going to do a controller and a charger to be named later. <laughs> so uh, to win this, uh, you have to go to our website, fill out the questionnaire. I know some of the questions are going to be difficult. Check with your wife or your girlfriend. You can uh, do a lifeline or, uh, you know, go to a member of the audience to help with these questions. They're not easy, uh, but you have to enter to win. So again, um, get in the, the Dream Build contest and uh, get that filled out because we're going to give away about $20,000 worth of EV components to one of our three lucky viewers uh, who managed to get through the question. Uh, meanwhile, stay with us.